Hello and welcome back to Sutton United Talk Time on Podcast. We're on a brand new season, 2018-19, where once again we're in the Vanarama National League and we're up to episode 10 overall of the podcast. Going to start the new season off with an apology to Simon Harding from the SUFC Elite side from last year. He gave me a lot of his time and gave me a really wonderful interview about the elite teams and the youth teams at Sutton United and it was all about the titles and successes and various things that were happening with the youth teams last year, what were happening in the trials and what they were hoping for for this season. Unfortunately, before I got a chance to broadcast it, I had a family bereavement which I had to go away for and when I came back, the moment had kind of gone. It was a bit time sensitive, so I do apologise and I'm really grateful for your time. Hopefully Simon will give me a chance to catch up with him at some point in the season where he can give me another interview and I'll be delighted to hear his views again and this time definitely broadcast them. So once again, apologies, Simon. A few slight changes to the format this year. I'm only going to be having one guest and two tracks. This is following various bits of feedback where people were saying the show was a bit too long, which I agree with. It also helps them become a bit more organised. I'm not constantly chasing around for various different things and hopefully things will run a bit smoother and it won't sound like I'm winging it all the time. But it probably will still sound like I'm winging it all the time, but it'll be easier for me to wing it. That said, if anyone does want to appear on the show or has any music they'd like to appear on the show, please contact me via the website, which is www.suttonpodcast.co.uk or any of my social medias, and I will certainly try to get as many people involved as possible. To open the show, we've got a brand new single from Lavender Hills, and it's called Never Coming Back Again. You can follow them on Facebook, which is at Lavender Hills Band, and this song was literally released just yesterday. Please enjoy. Oh uh-huh. 
Joining me now is Chairman of the Board of Directors, Dave Fairbrother, who um, he holds that role. I believe there's others because you kind of, uh, my little tiny spreadsheet um, went into overdrive when I asked <laughs> what, what, what other roles people held. And I looked at it and I was like, what happened there? That was pretty five minutes ago. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure which hat I wear from time to time, but yeah, there's a few roles, I feel. So just for anyone who doesn't um, know yourself, um, I'm sure there can't be that many people, but we do have a lot of new fans. If you could just give us a little bit of an instruction to yourself, how you came about Sutton United, um, essentially, who are you? Right, started watching Sutton when I was 10. One of my mates at school said, come down and watch. They're really good. And after weeks of badgering, my dad, he eventually took me down. And I'd been told to watch the little number 11 because he was excellent. And he was. But I watched the little number 10, who was even better. And that was a chap called Larry Pritchard. <laughs> so I was hooked. I started going home and away on the coaches to games. Rothmans, some people will remember, in 1974, took on the league sponsorship and started a quiz. And I got roped into the quiz team. And as a consequence of being in the quiz team, I was asked to join the Supporters Club committee. I then became secretary of the Supporters Club for seven years. I used to do the magazine Touchliner. I remember printing that on an old Romeo in my bedroom. Uh, I then got invited onto the management committee. I was switched to secretary. Then I was club secretary, company secretary. And since 2011, I've been chairman of the board of directors. <laughs> so like most other people, you kind of get sucked in to do these little bits and then you find it's almost a full time job. Is that would that be true? It's definitely a full time <laughs> job. Uh, even as chairman of the board, it's there's also all the ground safety uh, matters to look at, not just on match days, but in leading up to them and all the safety plans we have to prepare, looking after the website working with some of the other communications so yeah it's pretty full on absolutely and you always have a nice quiet summertime i, I, I remember that yeah nice, I nice off some, quiet summers last for about a week <laughs> well this this season with signings has been quite i mean big signings obviously but not not as many as there has been in the past um no, it's, been, it's been a bit quieter yeah uh when i was club secretary obviously i was heavily involved in that and i i do the signings uh I remember one of the signings, I think John Range was the manager. It's the only time I've ever had to go to a deserted motorway service station at 11.30 at night and sign somebody on under the uh, glare of the security lights. And that was Jeff Pitcher. Uh, yes. So I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> so uh, I'm a bit one step removed from the signings. But I believe Doz is still looking at uh, other options. Yeah, I, I think he said there was one more possibility, but he was happy with what he's got. But um, we've not heard anything since on there. But there's been other other stuff going on this off season um, with lots of different things happening with the ground. You obviously mentioned the, the health and safety um, hat you have as well. Just saw on the website a little while ago about the Coventry game asking people to move away from the pitch perimeter. Yes, it's something that we uh, we hesitated to have to be able to to have to tell to supporters. But I'm afraid we have no option. Since we've been in contention for promotion to the Football League, we've been coming under closer scrutiny from various aspects of the safety authorities who license grounds for football to be played on. And we've come a long way since we played in front of two or 300 people at home to clubs in the Ryman League. And the rules are very different for this level of football and the level of pub. We've put in, obviously, at the end of last season, a lot of crush barriers. We've put in new security uh, segregation gates. We've added more segregation gates in the summer. We've put in CCTV. Uh, we're changing the way we steward matches to comply with the way it's expected in the Football League. But the most noticeable for supporters, and I'd stress we didn't want to do this, so please be <laughs> gentle on us. We're looking for ways to not have to do this. We cannot have anybody standing on the flat or against the pitch perimeter fence. Spe standing spectators must stand behind crush barriers. There is no option. We cannot change it. I do apologise. I know it will upset a lot of people. It upsets me because to me, that's not part of what's watching non-league football in particular Sutton is about. But we have to abide. We have to enforce it. And the stewards will be asked to ask people politely to stand behind the crash barriers. We're looking for alternative solutions. I saw somebody on the forum today said, what can you do about strengthening the fence? And that's clearly the option. And we're looking at that and we're getting prices. But we also have to take into account how much we would spend on those physical options because if we went into the football league there is no flat standing allowed full stop whatsoever no excuses nowhere nowhere no how so 
we might only do it for six months. And would how much money would you spend for six months worth of standing? So all these decisions have to be taken into account. Of course. I mean, I'm not, I actually stand a little bit away. Every now and then I do like to lean over the, 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 the defence there. And um, it was kind of one of my spots during a, a wonderful cup run a couple of years ago. So I kind of positioned myself there because as I was walking out, I turned to see an attack and Rory scored a goal in the last minute. So I was <laughs> like, this is my spot now. But what is the the reason? I know, I know, I know it's the health and safety director, but what are they saying is is the problem? Because safety in football grounds is governed by something that we know as the Green Guide. It's got a more slightly longer official title, but it's what came in after the uh, Taylor inquiry and Taylor report, and it puts load levels onto barriers in football grounds. Doesn't apply in other sports, which is a bit disappointing. In football grounds, crush barriers have to be a certain loading, and the pitch perimeter fence has to be a certain loading. And although this perimeter fence is common throughout non-league football, lots of clubs have it, it is not designed to meet the loading that is stated in the Green Guide. And therefore, if it's not designed to that level, nobody can stand up against it. No arguments. Right, I see, I see. The only the only way around it is you can manage the risk by putting stewards in to ensure that the crowd is only ever one or two people deep, but you'd probably be looking at an extra 50 stewards a game. That'll help our attendance, though. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and not the profit no absolutely not so obviously there's the words out on on social media and on the forum and on, yeah, and on the website on the forum later i've only just got home from work yeah so no later, but, of, uh, yeah. of course um but will the stewards be given almost like flyers letters because i'm i know some people will be taking a little bit of back about the, the, the stewards telling them where they can't stand if they've stood there for x number of years uh, that's a good idea. If we can get something printed for tomorrow, we'll try. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, we can, we can try and do that. But the stewards will be asked to politely tell people, "Sorry, you can't uh, you can't stand where you stood for the last thirty years." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I've quite often stood on the terraces of Sutton and leaned up against the fence. I leaned up against the fence when we played Leeds in nineteen seventy, and dozens and dozens of other times since. So I, yeah. I have my own views on it. No, absolutely, I can I can hear that. Um, does it affect? After the game, so um, we we do get quite a good bond with the players when they come round to sort of thank the supporters. A lot of the young kids are up against the barriers, shaking hands, touching hands. Yep, we're I not think, sure. I think there might be some common sense shown. Lovely. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> we'll move on from there for a moment. I know the bar's been redone. That's ready for tomorrow. Yes, yes. Um, and it's very much lastminute.com. Um, the TV, the new TVs, there's 65 inch TVs going into the bars. Uh, they were powered up yesterday and connected and the signal's all tuned in and everything's ready. Uh, I think there's still a little bit of work to do, uh, but they are ready to use tomorrow and all the bars will be commissioned and open and uh, it looks quite swish. Excellent. I mean, I think I think uh, drink, electric and TV would be plenty for tomorrow. I don't think anyone's going to want any any bells on or anything. Just that's, that'll be enough for everyone to just yeah, it's, the bar. It's, it's not basic. It's, it's almost ready. Oh, no, I've seen the pictures. They're lovely. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's looking very good. Yes, it is. And obviously that's done because that main hall in particular was originally built in 1973. It's been refurbished since, but not in a major way. And it needed to be brought into a modern era to look professional, to look upmarket, and to try and attack... To, a slightly different audience to, to some of the bookings we get. There are other markets that we're not tapped into mm-hmm. that would potentially give us even better income than we get currently from the stadium club. And last year, we were amazed on the board to see that the total takings for the stadium club actually exceeded the year before. So when we had all the, the cup ties, Leeds, Arsenal, Wimbledon, and Bruce and Tim Vine doing their double act in front of the TV cameras, we set records for the, for the bar for the year, and we've actually surpassed it in the, the 12 months just finished, which was remarkable. And an excellent effort by everyone concerned on the stadium club committee and the bar staff. And I'm sure the Gandemonium chaps and, and Malcolm. And I'm Horn sure they played their part. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <mentioning> no names. <laughs> yeah. yes absolutely. Obviously, you mentioned the, the cup tie and, and the amazing, um, well, basically, last three seasons have been sort of out of this world, really, as, as a Sutton supporters. How, how, how's it been for yourself on the board? I liken it to a bubble it started when we went on that 26 match unbeaten run to win the national league south so imagine the, that balloon sort of slowly inflating to the point where it looks like a balloon and we've won yeah. the league. And I, then we got into the national league and then the cup run happened and the balloon got close to the point of bursting yeah. so i thought it can't get any bigger and then we started to challenge for the title last season and yeah. i thought at some point perhaps you put a big hole in the balloon and everything comes crashing out hopefully not that's our job to try and make sure that we, we maintain that balloon but it has been an incredible three years. I mean, the most successful three years in the club's history. 
Uh, I think I can say that I wrote the centenary book, so I've got a fair uh, <laughs> knowledge of what we've done in the past. And I think this is probably as good a period as we've ever had. The run was ridiculous because we, we were so far out of it and we just started a few games here and there. And then it's like, oh, we're doing quite well. And then we're doing very well. well. Hang on a minute. Could this happen? No, of course it can't happen. Don't be silly. And then, oh my God, it did happen. And then same with the, the FA Cup run. It was kind of getting, I mean, look, I've said many times um, we drew Forest Green. We were out of the cup as far as I was concerned. That was it. We'll concentrate on staying in the league last, uh, on that season. And pretty much every single round it was, ah, uh, well, it's been fun, um, but we, we're going we're gonna to drop out now. Yeah, and if you look at that run, the only game where we went into it as favourites to win and then only narrowly was Dartford, where we've never done really well in. in and, and they were flying high as well. The best cup ties you've, you'll ever see. Yeah, that was a crazy cup tie. Josh and I, were, my, my nephew and I, were sort of sitting at each other, looking at each other, going, "Hang on, what's going on here? Don't don't go to the loo. You might miss something here." Yeah. Um, but even it was it was narrower favourites on that because I think they were flying high at the time, and there was were, the, yeah. a little bit of a concern of we we could we could get done here ourselves. And then obviously last season we we're right in it right until the last couple of games. Um, amazing, and the, the worries then everyone's sitting there thinking about what's going to happen with the pitch, and it's like this is this is kind of ridiculous to be sitting here worried about what are we going to do when we're a league club for little old Sutton supporters. Because say for a long long time we've been sort of yeah, well, uh, I'm sure Bruce would tell you the same thing, and the other directors. There were a lot of sleepless nights. Yes. Because everyone's, it was funny reading the forum. Going, I'm sure the directors know what they're doing. <laughs> and we're talking to each other, saying, "I wish someone would tell us then." Because <laughs> um, clearly, we wanted to do what was best for the club. We wanted to go up. We wanted to have a magnificent ground. We wanted to not be bankrupt. We wanted to still keep the three G. We wanted to be in the football league. Something had to give. Yeah. And in the end, we didn't get the results, so it, it, we didn't happen. But we still had the highest finish we've ever had in the club uh- history. Yeah, uh, we did brilliantly with a little bit more luck with things going well. We could have come second. We could have even come for in the end, Macclesfield uh, won it deservedly and they won it comfortably. But six weeks from the end of the season, it didn't look like that. No, I mean, I think it was described. Um, I can't remember who actually said it, but it was we're in a win win situation. If we went up, we're fantastic. We'll, t- we'll obviously take it. We're, we're not going to be one of these clubs that say, no, we can't do that. We lose the 3G pitch, but we're a league club. If we didn't go up, we keep our lovely pitch and our model and all the rest of it. What made me quite proud, and I've mentioned it a few times, boring now, is the the fans, especially on the forum, a lot of the concern was, wasn't was just around the first team. It was around all the other teams that use the facilities. And, and that was exactly our concern as well. The, the community side is an enormous success. Uh, two years ago, we were a conference merit award for the community programme. We've been community business of the year in Sutton. This year, Tony Henderson-Smith won Volunteer of the Year, which he thoroughly deserved. And we were concerned. Yes, we want to be a football league club. If it means playing on grass, we, we lose that pitch. And that is an enormous part of the community aspect of this club. And it happened so quickly that we went from being National League South to being edge of the Football League, that perhaps that grew much quicker and more encompassing, more all-encompassing than, than we'd been able to, to plan for. We've still got to plan for what happens if we go up at the end of this season. But we're definite that the community side is vital to this club. We've got some good pieces of the news to announce fairly soon when we can finally be confident that certain things are happening. So the community side continues to grow. The, the disability team, for example, just had a, a wonderful uh, effort in the George Best Cup in Belfast and came second, runners up for the second year running. Uh, Mm -hmm. They've done brilliantly. We have players from some of the big football league and Premier League clubs leaving disability sections to join Sutton United. And you think, (laughs) wow, Steve King's got um, got hidden talents. I've known the guy for years. And you think, wow, well done, Steve. It's brilliant. And it's not just that. It's the ladies team. It's all the Colts teams. It's the academy. Yeah. That's all part of the holistic growth in attendances that's seen us go from 650 to 2200. Uh, yeah. it's not just the season ticket pricing that's part of it it's the quality of football but it's the community aspect as well a lot of those people play for the club absolutely and they've got a, a connection with the club that's their club especially if they play in exactly. uh, they play on the pitch that's their pitch that's their club um for a lot of us um i, li- I live in sutton i work in sutton i said this to marvin as well about his academy boys every now and then it just throws me a little bit to see someone in a sutton united top or something showing Sutton United colours, a cap or something, I'll, I'll look and think, 
hang on, that, that wouldn't have been 10 years ago. And these are people I don't know who they are. Um, I'm not saying I know every single person to go and have a chat with, but you kind of get an idea when you've seen the same faces in sort of crowds of 500 and to see complete strangers to me wearing full, like, Sutton United shirts and all sorts. It's like, who are you? <laughs> Where have you come from? Well, um, if, I, if I cast my mind back a long time to when I was secretary of the Sporters Club, I probably knew virtually every supporter in the ground by name because most of them were members. Yeah. I could probably have told you their addresses off the top of my head. <laughs> Recently, I came out of a theatre in Dorking to face two people that had been at the same show that were wearing Sutton United bobble hats. It was in the snow, so there wasn't a <laughs> I was on a train at Crawley and people wearing Sutton United sweatshirts. And then you get emails come into the, the uh, Sutton United Club account from Rio de Janeiro or from Washington State saying, how do I buy a replica shirt? <laughs> We never used to sell replica shirts outside Mitcham. Yes. And now that it's, it's all over the world. It's, it's, it's amazing. It, it, it's it, it, transformational. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of that, obviously, the all over the world thing is, is the explosion of the, the social media side where you can... It's, it's the internet and it's the cup run. Yeah, yeah, we've been I known... if you weren't abroad, and most of us obviously weren't, you didn't appreciate quite how much that FA Cup run with the Arsenal game caught the imagination of so many people in so many places. Yeah. It's absolutely. quite remarkable. I, mean, I don't think we, we understood that, I think, at all. No. Um, when, you know, we were told between 100 and 200 million people watch that game, and I can't comprehend that. No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I remember the, I think it was at the time of the first Wimbledon game, um, I ended up in a conversation with a guy on via Twitter who was watching in America going, who are these two sides? Which one should I be rooting for? And I'm like, you should be rooting for Sutton. And he then was saying, no, that's it. Sutton's my team now. And um, it was just like, that's just really bizarre. I'm standing at Gander Green Lane on Knights Community Stadium and I'm talking to a guy in America watching us live on TV. Not like, no, it wasn't that game. It was the Leeds game. It must have been, sorry. Yes, Leeds was live, yeah. 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 But on that, what are the, uh, put your fan hat on for a second. Um, not, not, board hat and um, what are the ambitions for the season for dave as the fan right dave as a fan my ambition ever since losing to bishop stortford has been i want to see Sutton united win the fa trophy at wembley <laughs> i mean yeah perhaps that's not the fashionable thing i know everyone talks about league titles these days oh not everyone to see to see Sutton win at wembley yeah. and i was asked at the, the, the limited company agm recently what did i think about entering the iron brew cup yes i was going to mention my, that my comment was well actually i'm a bit old school i thought football was meant to be fun and yes you want to win leagues and whatever but actually playing away to clubs in scotland that might be a bit of a kick you know yes. i quite like that we might even do quite well so I'm all for that. I mean, perhaps we wouldn't want to be in it every season, but we're the first two teams to be entered into it from England. Yeah, let's give it a go. I remember the Anglo-Italian Cup. When the first game was out there, two supporters, Nigel and John, went out to watch the game. And then for the final, we took 50 people. And nobody from England had taken 50 people to the final before. The next year, we went out and we stayed for a week in Sorrento. It was, you remember it, you make friends, but it transformed the club. The players made friendships with each other some of them still last to this day. And that's, I think football's meant to be fun. And yeah, we want to do well in the league, but only one team can win the league. Let's enjoy the whole season. Yeah, I think that might be the, the, the mantra. We might need to start enjoying it. Like um, like the World Cup at the moment, where everyone's, oh, we're going to struggle, we're going to struggle. And it's like, actually, you know what? Let's just, let's just, it was Robbie Savage that said it. And I can't believe I agreed with Robbie Savage. Um, no. Saying, you know what? Just, Take don't don't be this. Take every game as it comes. Just enjoy the whole thing. Just look forward to it. And it's like, yeah, just go yes, with flow. you know what? Let's start looking forward to things. Saying it's not the most fashionable thing on the FA Trophy. Don't worry, we did have Dukey on, and um, I think we all know that um, Surrey Senior Cup. Yeah, there's a, another company. Like well, I'd like to win that as well because I'd like to be the record, the club that holds the record for the most wins. Yes, yes. I, as I said, I, I wrote the centenary, but the history of this club. Perhaps I'm not Mark Frank, but. It's ingrained into me. So I like to see records set and I like to see us written in the record books. This week, or tomorrow rather, we've got Coventry coming again. Yes. Um, sounds good to say that again, just like it's blase. Um, it's, the, it's the third time in 30 years um, with the return of, of Max. Yes. And that's why we're playing them, of course. Yeah, he's done superbly well there. Have you been following his progress? I did. Interesting. It was a bit like Sutton where he was putting in the effort and not scoring the goals. And then after Christmas, suddenly the goals started to come for him. And he's got two or three absolute crackers. There was one that he hit like a rifle bullet. I think that was... Around... It was his first or second goal for them, and it went in like a rocket. Yeah, I think that was around the time um, Cyril Regis had passed away. It was, and, yeah. um, and he kind of put that in, and, and 
very, very poignantly dedicated to Cyril Regis, which it was a player I loved when I was younger. Um, but yeah, I think in November time, even there was a couple of Coventry fans having a little pop at him saying, yeah. oh, he's useless, take him back. And we were going, yeah, 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 fine. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> send, it, send him back. No, no problem at all. Um, and then now you see their, their messages to him and they absolutely adore him. He's fantastic for him. He's uh, not- good. Yeah, but he's a nice guy as well. So he was he's always, a nice guy, yeah. and it's and it's good for the club that we can be seen to produce players that go into the football league and are a success because it helps the management team to encourage other players to join us. Of course, yeah. So the 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 younger the other younger players. I know we not we've signed some um, older players this season, um, but when you see the younger players coming through, going well, actually, I'm going to use something uh, perhaps potentially as a springboard, and I know one never really likes that. But it does mean that we get to see players that we potentially wouldn't normally have seen playing at Sutton. They would have not often gone to League Two yeah, clubs. Yeah, I, I think people have to accept that unless you're Liverpool, Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, every club in England is a springboard to another club. Yeah. And even those clubs are often springboards to Real Madrid and Barcelona. So, um, yeah. you know, it's, 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 your, it's your lot in football. Yeah, you, absolutely. You know, people come on, do well, and they look for something bigger. Absolutely. Well, I mean, we, we've done really well. The last three or four seasons, really, really well. Some players have come in. They've, They've done all right. They haven't quite made it. Um, one of the players I'd, I've really enjoyed watching um, was actually um, Jack Jeb. Yes. I know he, I know he didn't quite cut it, but you could just see him when he was touching the ball. You're like, oh my uh, god, oh yeah, my god. So. Yeah, came on, look, had time on the ball. Looked like you could see where he'd been coached. Yeah, but absolutely. Looking, think of a player who did okay at Sutton, and we thought, yeah, there's something there. But I imagine some of us are probably surprised that Carl Vassell is doing really well in the football league. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, so he you didn't know, go from us to the football league. Of course, he they went sort of sideways. Yeah, and he's doing really well. But he came to the fore again when he came to Sutton. So again, you know, we'll, we'll claim a little bit of credit there. I always claim the credit. <laughs> <laughs> and so fixtures were released on Wednesday. I know you would have obviously poured over them. And... I have to, actually haven't had much time. I, I know we're playing Harrogate on the opening day. And I yep. saw who our Christmas fixtures were. And that's honestly about all I've had time to do. I've been so wrapped up in work the last 48 hours that uh, and uh, travelling uh, on southern trains or, or lack of trains yes which, uh, yeah. caused a few problems I even had to watch the England game on plus one because my Ooh. train got delayed and I ended up on another train that didn't stop at my station even though it was meant to and went sailing through so uh, I had an interesting uh, <laughs> yeah experience that evening. well one that jumped out at me is the glory boys on the TV the Salford City yes um, they, I think we're there our first Saturday home match yes I thought that might have been a TV game but I see I think they're on on the first week aren't they so, yeah, um, yeah but so we'll that, out there. I mean let's let's no, let's generalise never mind a lot of Man United supporters will obviously be interested in that and a lot of them live near us so we might get a good crowd for that one um, yeah I think, I think we'll get a decent crowd I think you know there's, there's some good games to look forward to it's possibly disappointing that Chesterfield's coming down on a midweek which is yeah, the other yeah. date I saw uh, but what we've got to do I know Adrian will be at the ground on Saturday with his famous uh, <laughs> table at the front gate trying to drum up the season tickets. We've had a good start. It's obviously lulled like it would do during the summer in the World Cup. But now the football starting again. Yeah. We want to get up to that 2,000 marks old. And that would yeah. be a, a real landmark for us if we can do that. And with the value we offer, the prices we offer for a season of football, works out at you know, what, a five or a game or something like that. It, it, why not? No, of course. I've been preaching that to people left right and centre it's just can't take their kids to Chelsea Arsenal so on and so on and so on because it's just too expensive and I'm like just don't be daft just come to something it's 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 virtually nothing when you compare it um, and the kids will love it They will. it will help them fall in love with football yes you're not seeing Premier League football but you're seeing proper football and real people and you can properly interact with them because a lot of the guys um, I don't know if you're on Twitter or not players do interact with, with people yeah, I, I have to admit, I, I try to avoid Twitter other than looking at what's on the club account. Or what Doswell's just said. Yeah, or what, or what Paul has just <laughs> Oh, said. what's he yes. promised everyone now? <laughs> and, and can we stop him? Yes. <laughs> looking forward to another great season. Um, bar has been set ridiculously high. So I think... Um, it's, it's, the, the, it is one of the downsides of being successful as what do then people look at a successful season next time. If we come fourth, is that a worse season or another successful season? <laughs> well, have we got to come second? Have we got to come first? What's what success and uh, it's very hard to know everyone measures it differently I'd love to do well in the Cups I've always obviously loved doing well in the FA Cup as I've said I'd love to get to Wembley well, especially, to... especially this season would be good yeah well, that would be nice I mean this season um, I've just seen it again today the um, prize money for the FA Cup 
and essentially doubled for each round. Someone was saying. I knew it was going up. I haven't seen the new figures. Yeah, oh, some, some, encouraging. yeah, someone was saying it's kind of. Again, I, I didn't look or, or compare it, but someone was saying prize money's basically doubled from from the uh, the early okay. round. And so, there's a little bit of prize money in the Iron Brew Cup, which you're guaranteed to get even for just for entering and the trophy money you know have a good run in the trophy brings in some money yeah but it's, it, it, all, it all helps football football now is very expensive it when is I started watching Sutton was an amateur football club players weren't officially getting paid and the game has changed enormously not just on the pitch but as we said earlier off the pitch yeah you've got to have facilities that meet certain requirements you've got to have social facilities that help you generate income during the week there's all the other aspects that go with that uh, of running a business with this sort of turnover. And we are a volunteer run business. You know, all the directors have other jobs or are retired. So they're all volunteers. We employ three full time people and we've got a t- two million pound turnover business. It's, um, it's a good effort by a lot of people. Yeah, it's staggering um, to, to, to think how, it, uh, how it's changed and how we're keeping up with that change with the volunteer based workforce. I mean, I remember the cup run again. All the news was just flabbergasted that, hang on, you're all volunteers. There's people doing, taking their holidays to do this kind of stuff. What, what's that all about? Um, yeah, our press secretary was taking days off work to meet with the press and then got told you should be working in the Premier League. You're better than some of them. <laughs> <laughs> but when you see the clubs that we, we're, we've got in our league, most of these clubs are going to be full time now. I mean, yeah, obviously- I mean, it's, it's what I said in the, the last year and the year before. I'm a football and rack. When I was seven or eight, I couldn't wait to get the evening news on a Friday night because it used to print the squads for all the teams that were playing in London that weekend. So I could have told you the normal one to 11 for Rochdale, Stockport, Tranmere, and they're the clubs that I remember. And now we're in the Football Conference and National League, and suddenly Torquay, Tranmere, Hartlepool, they're coming to us in league yeah. matches, and we're beating them. Yeah. Wrexham. Now, Wrexham's the oldest international football ground or something in continuous use or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, we're playing against them. It's not they're coming to us. It's we're going yeah. to their grounds as as equals. As um, equals and winning. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I, know, I, know, I have to pinch myself that for the, certainly the first season it was just like an extended cup run. Oh, yeah. That was wonderful. Yeah, for me, um, Leighton Orient was was the one because my my a lot of my family, my dad um, lo- yeah. loved Leighton Orient, um, yeah. and it's like you're sitting there looking at them going hang on, what, what's going on? Why are we playing this team? This isn't right. I know some of the guys play, um, went up to Chesterfield, uh, not Chesterfield, sorry, um, Tranmere, and looking around Tranmere going, this, this is mad. These guys oh, were... Sensational ground. And very close to Premier League a couple of years, not that many years ago. They got very close to being in the Premier League. And when you go behind the scenes mm-hmm. and you think we've done some nice refurbishment and you see what they have behind the scenes and you realise the gap between us and them <laughs> is just enormous. They deserve to be back in the Football League because they're a Football League club in, in everything but name, even when they're in the conference. But what's nice, and obviously I'm on the board of directors, so you meet the, away dire- the, the home directors or the away directors when you're playing another club and you go to their boardrooms. And they're all so very friendly. Well, nearly all. There are, there are a couple. Uh, but nearly all the clubs are really, really friendly. We get on well. All the clubs get on well with each other. We try to help each other with obviously, you know, within certain bounds, we all want to win. But the clubs, how did you find this? What, what, and, and everyone talks really well. The clubs get on. And even the clubs that are the big traditional football league clubs, there isn't actually a boardroom level, this we're so much bigger, better than you attitude. They know that we're all in it together because it all depends on what happens out on that pitch. Yeah, of course, because essentially if we have a rubbish product as of the National League, is the standard is no good. We're all going to suffer because people will just switch off and won't want to watch yeah, it. There's some good players in this league and there's some good matches. I mean, if you look at our squad, several of our players have played Premier League football. There's quite a few of our players that probably shouldn't be at Sutton. Should definitely be playing at high levels, um, which is testament to, obviously, Doz, yourselves, keeping them all here. And just the whole aura around the club. It's just a a, a very friendly, respected club throughout football. I know ever I I think it's something that happened before. We We had it in the year under Barry Williams. And I'd love to talk about that in a second as well. We had it under the year under Barry Williams where players would leave and they'd come back because they actually found that they actually really liked it and they were well treated. And I think that says something about the club. And there are other clubs like that as well that people go back to. And I think it's good that you have clubs like that where people know they're appreciated, know they'll be well looked after. But talking about Barry Williams, Mm -hmm. uh, as people know, we sadly lost him a few weeks ago. Yeah. On the 28th of July, uh, there is a match in his honour against Old Palmitarians, which was his old boys club where he did a bit of coaching and management, and uh, I think he might even have played a few games there. They're based in Walthamstow, 
unfortunately, it's on the same day that we play Norwich. It's the 28th. It's a two o'clock kickoff. But if people do want to go up there, and obviously not trying to drive people away from the Sutton game, if people wanted to go to that game, we're playing uh, a match in Barry's honour against old Palmetarians, when I think that's uh, that's a good idea. Absolutely. Um, when you say we're playing, what what? Oh yeah, I should say. Uh, obviously, the first team are playing Norwich. Yeah. It'll be Marvin's team. It'll be the academy side. Oh, the academy side. Okay. And kind of... they did say actually, if you bring your first team down, it might not be much of a game. <laughs> but surely we've got a number for people like Lenny and stuff. You can you can get a few of them out. Uh, yeah, we are going to contact them and see if they want to pop along. Yeah, certainly. I think I think playing might even be a stretch. <laughs> uh... <laughs> they did all right in the Legends game against themselves. <laughs> people of the similar yes yeah. no he's he's uh, he, he still looks like he's a player then. I know he hasn't put on, hasn't put on an ounce no I it's like... only when he moves the legs <laughs> <laughs> the jokes haven't got much better either I can tell you no that. they haven't <laughs> no. no well thank you very very much I'll let you get you on to your evening and have a bit of an earlier dinner tonight than you got last night yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> and I shall see you tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, I'll put a message yes. to remind people out to, to stay away from the barriers and yeah. about the 28th of July as well. I'll include that on, on my little blog post to go with the website as well. Yeah, great. Thank you All very much. It's you're been a pleasure. Lovely. Thanks for a lot, Dave. See you soon. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you very, very much. So hopefully it's a good run out against Coventry today. The Hopefully boys get some good um, minutes under the belt and it's a good turnout for the crowd and lots of you get a chance to stay and use the new facilities in the bar watching the England match. The club shop have announced that the away shirt is available as from today as well. Please all help out with the barrier thing. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and lots of people like to stand at the barrier. Um, it does sound like it's some, one of these things that's rather foisted upon us. Um, one of the drawbacks of success, I guess, with uh, extra rules and regulations that we have to follow. Um, playing us out is a band called Peng Shui and it's called Don't Like Me. They're on Twitter at Peng Shui Music, which is P-E-N-G-S-H-U-I Music. And please enjoy. Bye-bye. See you in the game. Things I have nothing, I know it's not no lie. More ground is covered by your steps, they ain't mine. Put a shotgun to your face and tell the world to never mind. I ain't stop standing looking around forever, you'll remain blind. I'll take away your pain, yeah, I've been suffering through the lines. Underwhelmed by yourself while I override your mind. I can't contain this rage, I can't be taken this outside. You said I can't do what the fuck I said, I want to, huh? When you say what you like, that's some freedom of speech, is a pinch of salt, it's only bands, I'm here forever That's my only plan fam, I'm here to stay forever So they don't like me, don't like me. Well I don't like them, well, I don't like them. What's, a man to do? What's a man to do? Go and fight them, go and fight who? When I'm right here, yeah. I'm right here It's on sight there, it's on sight man I don't like beef but I don't like them I'm good fam, I ain't hype yeah. I about you but I'm happy I've done about them in the back, in the back no. Big up my mans and my traps Big up my girl and my nan Out to 
Big Des who got a bit wham Better luck for your grind in your dime Rest in peace Ask for my old school dogs All that Westside dance Who used to roll weed in the valley Where y'all like me Where y'all like me